because that's the point of martial arts is just to learn and grow and self-improve. If I go in from this position of, hey, I want to learn, then eventually people will respect that What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 710, with my guest today, Master Matthew Eiler. I am Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host here for the show. I founded Whistlekick because I love traditional martial arts, and that's why we do all the things that we're doing. Go to whistlekick.com, check out everything we're doing. We are constantly updating, adding, iteratively improving. It is kind of our mindset here with everything that we do. How do we get 1% better every time we do something? And that means if you're not checking out all the things that we do, you're probably missing out on some of those improvements featuring products and projects you could incorporate into your life and training. Speaking of products, if you find something in our store at whistlekick.com that you like, use the code podcast15. That's going to save you 15%, and it helps us on the back end know that our efforts are working. If you want to go deeper on this or any other episode of the show, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You'll see new episodes of the show twice a week. The entire purpose behind everything we do is to connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists worldwide. If you want to help guarantee future episodes of the show, you can do a whole bunch of things like make a purchase, maybe share an episode with a friend, or support our Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. It's a place where we post exclusive content like bonus episodes, updates on who's coming up on the show, things like that, and you can get access for as little as $2 a month. Check it out. And if you want the whole list, the entirety of the ways that you can help us and support our mission, go to whistlekick.com slash family. I had a great chat with Matthew Eiler today. Very similar backgrounds, not so much in what we trained, but why we trained and how we trained. And that led to some really good conversations. We talked about everything from starting schools, growing schools to so much more. So hang out, check it out, enjoy. And I'll see you in the outro. Hello, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. So nice to meet you. How are you doing, sir? I'm I'm doing wonderfully. And yourself? I'm I'm okay. I'm hanging in there. It's a Tuesday. Yeah. We're doing okay. Tuesday's a good day for you? Yeah, Tuesday's a great day. Tuesday's a great day. Be better, be better when it's Friday, but you know we're good. We're good. <laughs> I understand. You've got some good stuff in your background. Like like Thanks. Yeah. Is our, that your school? Uh, yeah, it's our school in the background. Yeah, that's You're our training for Decorated. Floor. Yeah, it looks. Most like, schools don't decorate. Most schools put up, you know, a flag or two. Or I'm married, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you didn't decorate your 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 other half decorated. Well, uh, I don't know if she's going to hear this. So, yes, yeah. <laughs> no, no, my wife's got a good touch. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Yeah, yeah. The colors are good. It looks good for. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a good conversation. Yeah. Well, uh, so this is where we get a choice. We can either dive right in. Or we can spend a few minutes talking and, and I can kind of prep you. Um, either Depends on your comfort level. Either one's fine. I'm, I'm, and, and let's charge forward. I'm I, I, yeah, I like when go. we charge forward. I, I think it comes out a little bit better. That's fine. Yeah, yeah let's go know. for it. Cool. Well, um, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. This this will all be, you know, behind the scenes stuff. How do you pronounce your last name? So I get so it right. Eiler. Eiler. That's Eiler, what like I would have guessed. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yep. I've gotten lots of different ones, though. That's it's Eiler. Okay. I would have guessed well. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting better with names. Names are tough. And as someone yeah, no with a name that, you know, frequently has been mispronounced, you know, it doesn't bother me, but I know that for some people it does, right? So yeah. I'm really sensitive to it. It's funny because, you know, being in martial arts, I've been called all like people get just, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I tell my students all the time. Out, like, isn't it? Yeah. I was like, you know who I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Just yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, yeah, definitely. Well, we're here to talk about martial arts. So, I, I'm going to start a little differently than, than normal because I, I'm loving the space behind you. How, how yeah. new is that school? So it's an interesting story. We opened up in September of 2020. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Which, where you're like, where you're like, why? Why would you do that? That is a question that I, I wasn't going to ask it quite that bluntly, but yeah, that's the heart of the question. Yes. Why would you do that? So my instructor had a school for about 15 years. He's in his 70s. Great, great guy. His name's David Barley. A uh, wonderful gentleman, but being in his 70s and during COVID, mm-hmm. he ended up closing up shop for a variety of reasons. His his he was done with that, um, and I was one of his head floor instructors. So I said to him, I said, "Hey, would you can I open up my own school? Would I have your blessing?" Yeah. He said, "Absolutely." So we opened up in fall of 2020. We're in New York, so right around things were. Still Where in not, New York are you? We're in the Hudson Valley, about two hours north of okay. New York City. 
Okay. Um, so things still weren't great as far as restrictions go, but they were loose enough that we could open up a school. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we opened up in September of 2020 and I w- about 75% of his students came with me. Mm, so nice. this is a newer school and a newer space, but a lot of my students I've known for the past 10 years or more. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I always tell people like we're a new school, but not, not really. Um, it's kind of a continuation. Yeah. It's like a grand remodel in, in all the ways yeah. you can use that. Yeah. Ne- next generation. So it's mm, uh, like going strong. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Were you at all apprehensive about, I mean, because there was so much, at, at that point in September, there was still so much unknown yeah. and, and, and the future, you know, for, for, I, I don't know if you know, I'm in Vermont. I'm, I'm about three, maybe yep. three and a half hours from here. Uh, I don't know how much the audience will, will know. I know because, you know, our states border each other. New York was kind of tight on yeah. a lot of things and there was a lot unknown. How confident were you going in? You know, it, it, even till recently, things were fairly tight. Like we just, mm. we, they just made masks fully optional uh, at the end of February. You know, granted, a lot of people weren't necessarily um, following those rules, but you know, it, that, that's technically what the, the mandate was for the state. Um, I'm very much a type of person. If I start thinking about it, I will ruminate on it and mm. obsess over it. And so I, I kind of blocked myself off from that. Um, I was very, very fortunate that when we opened up the school, I had this student base, you know, so many, so many um, instructors have a hard time making that jump to full time because you, you, you have to build up your base to a certain point and then, um, you know, lose that, uh, that security, that job security. So I was a public school teacher for about 10 years before we opened up the school. So I had a nice unionized job, uh, Mm -hmm. with benefits and, uh, steady pay raise each year. Um, but I had always known that I wanted to open up a studio. Mm -hmm. So when this opportunity came, I said, all right, let's, let's, let's do it. Um, my wife is super, super supportive. Um, and things were really weird for even the first year, you know, we weren't doing, uh, we weren't doing sparring. We weren't doing our, our traditional risk grab, self-defense, that type of thing. It was a lot of uh, forms and uh, practicing in the air. Um, and it was really hard. But uh, I, I think I'm a pretty creative instructor. And so we made it work. Um, mm-hmm. And we just kept holding out hope that it wasn't going to be like this forever. And finally, finally, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. And I'll tell you, it, it ended up being... Um, obviously COVID was, was horrible for so many reasons. You know, I don't have to say that, but for me personally, it ended up working out very, very well because, um, I don't think I would have gotten this opportunity otherwise. Hmm. And when restrictions did start finally lifting, everyone was like chomping at the bit. Um, so our school actually, actually didn't just survive. It thrived once the restrictions started opening up. Yeah. And so, uh, we started off when we opened up the school with about mm, like 70 students. Um, and now we, we have, uh, somewhere around like 175. (laughs) Um, yeah. So it's, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great story. You know, um, we're really, really proud of what we've done here. Yeah. Because that growth was so significant. I'm sure there are school owners smacking their, their head. Jeremy, ask why? How? How yeah. did he do that? So, so yeah, that's a good, it's a great question. How were you able to grow that fast, that substantially? Yeah. So I always, when people ask me, because because my instructor was a was was a was a great guy, and um, you know, he even struggled to 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 grow that fast. And I always, I always say it's twofold, you know, as far as what's going on inside the studio, I was a school teacher for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. My background, I have my master's in education. Um, so, you know, as far as what happens inside the school, we are really focused on high quality instruction. Um, I don't claim to be the best martial artist in the world by any means. There's people who can kick higher and spar better. Um, but I do think I'm a great instructor in my, my background in education. And I say that very humbly, like not in a bragging way, but like we really, really pride ourselves on the instruction that we offer here. Yeah. Um, and I'm always looking for, for new techniques and new ways to work with students and, um, and that type of thing. And I've trained up a really strong leadership team underneath me. We have a group of about five to 10, um, teenagers and young adults who assist with me. Um, they go through training with me individually to become better instructors and that type of thing. Um, 
so just really focusing on high quality and and kind of the everything followed suit. I mean, most of our uh, students that we got for a long time were through referrals. You know, oh, I I go here. Oh, we really love it. So on and so forth. And you, and you can't buy that. You know, you, you can't you can't pay for that. So that was really good. And then as far as outside of the studio, uh, we just really dived into SEO and mm-hmm. Google and that type of thing. If you're a if you're a studio owner who is struggling with getting new students, um, I know there's a, a a large chunk of people out there who are very old school and still still you know print up flyers and go put them on cars at the mall and. Mm-hmm. You know, and and that that was great for a time, but I really encourage everyone to to dive into Google, dive into social media, um, because if you can learn how to harness that tool, it's it's so helpful. So yeah, yeah so now nowadays, um, most of our students they're either referrals, they they know someone who goes here, or it's just a, a Google or social media search, um, and those have been our two avenues. It's been great. Nice. Word of mouth, obviously, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what you do. If somebody yep. else is going to vouch for you, it's the best thing in the world, and then. The easiest thing, you may not know, some of the listeners know, I do some consulting for some martial arts schools. And the thing that I keep coming back to in here, this one's free, everybody. The thing that we keep coming back to that has the best return on investment is Google reviews. Mm-hmm. Claim your Google business listing. Yep. Figure out how to get how reviews work. It'll take you minutes. Get everyone in your school to leave a review. And I, I watch it because I, I manage a lot of websites and I see it one or two reviews in a month and we can see the impact on the search terms we track and then they don't get any for a while and it dips back down again. But the ones that have like constant reviews, they just scream upwards. Yeah. And there's so many great resources out there um, nowadays. If you just, if you do a YouTube search for like improve yeah. my SEO, mm-hmm. like there, there's so many simple steps. You don't have to be a, a mastermind. I'm not. Mm-hmm. My, my wife does a lot of the work behind the scenes for me. Um, so she, she, she's not a computer mastermind either. But you know, if you could just do those few basic steps of like you said, claiming your Google business. Um, and then uh, we've also had a really great uh, response from like social media, local community groups, kind of combining mm-hmm. that word of mouth and sure. uh, your internet presence together. If you can get plugged into those areas, uh, it's, it's so helpful. And then once you get people in the door, you know, they're going to see that quality product you're offering. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. You've Definitely. mentioned your wife a few times, so I got to ask: yeah. Does she train? So um, <laughs> <laughs> she did for a while. She did yeah. for a while. It's been my thing. Um, sure. I've been training since I was about ten years old. Um, but she is a champ. We started dating uh, when I was in high school, and when we when we were both in high school, wow. and uh, she she follows me around to the, all the tournaments, and uh, she knows like we do a lot of Korean terminology at our school. We're, we're at Tong Sudo School. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she knows just as much of the Korean as our black belt students. And, um, she trained for a short time, but we have three kids, uh, who we homeschool. Um, and you know, that and running the business and, you know, she's, she doesn't, she's She's great. She does a million other things. Yeah, no, absolutely. I always tell people, people think like, oh man, uh, master Eiler, you know, you're, you're, you, you run this school. You're the, and I'm like, no, listen, I said, if anything happens to Mrs. Eiler. I was like, we're screwed. You know, we're in trouble. (laughs) Um, I I just show up and teach. She takes care of making sure there's a place for us to teach and for you to go to. I told her, I was like, the lights won't even be on for a week if she disappears, guys. (laughs) I love Um, it. Yeah, so she's great. So she uh she she wants to get back into training, but right now we have we have our three kids that we homeschool and my youngest is he's three. Um and then my two daughters are uh seven and eight. It's just it's a busy time. Yeah. Um yeah, but it's it's definitely a family affair. All my kids train. It's it's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So you said 10? You started at 10? Yeah. So I was about 10 years old. Um my dad growing up was in the military. And so every three years we got restationed. Mm. So I was actually born in Germany. We lived in Hawaii, DC, all different places. Um, and when he finally got out of the service, when I was around 10 years old, we moved back to New York because that's where he was from. And uh, when I was at that age, you know, right before middle school, um, I was just having a really hard time adjusting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was an oddball kid, didn't have social graces, you know, had trouble focusing. I'm just a little quirky, like so many of us are. Sure. Um, and so my parents were really looking for activities to enroll us in to try and help us to make friends, all of me, me and my siblings. Um, and my sister tried martial arts first. And I was like, that's dumb. I'm never doing it. I've seen the karate kid. That's lame. Like, we're, 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 I'm, I'm not doing that. 
Um, and they said, you, you have to use it. We don't care what you do. You have to take a class. You have to try it at least once. And I did. And I, I loved it. Um, you know, I class. started, what, what's that? The first class. You yeah, were, first you were class. The first, first class. class. I was like, this, this is great. There aren't too many 10 year olds that fall in love with something. No, no. You so know, was especially this the instructor that you no, took over so for? I started okay. I started at a different school. Okay. Um I started a different school, same kind of area. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, like I said, I fell in love with it right away. I always tell people that the great thing about martial arts is I, I always say it's the most individualized team sport, mm-hmm. you know, where it's a personal journey. So like I didn't have to worry about keeping up with everybody or I'm letting down my team. It was all about me. But it was a team in the sense that we had the support system of instructors and and fellow classmates who were encouraging each other and um, training together and you know sweating on the floor together and it's just you know that that camaraderie. Um, so I started around age ten. Um, eventually, some things uh, you know down the line there were some changes and I, I was in between schools and um, I would go to tournaments, just go to as many tournaments as I can. I don't recommend doing this, but I wouldn't even ask permission. I would just show up and and asked to compete and sign up that day. And, uh, they let me compete. And, uh, so I went to a tournament and this is where I met, met, um, master David Barley, who was my instructor. Um, and he was amazing, was very welcoming. His students came up to me, um, and, you know, congratulated me on winning and we talked and had great camaraderie. And I, like I said, I was in between schools at this point. Um, so I was like, all right, you know? And so I, continued with him. I reached out to him. And uh, that was in... I'd been training for about 11 years at that point. That was 2011. Um, he closed his school in 2020. I was one of his instructors for about 10 years. And uh, now we have our own studio here. So yeah, it'll be uh, 22 years this fall I've been training. Wow. Yeah. You know, the, the experience you had being between schools without a school, without a master, without an instructor, however you want to term it, it's a common sure. experience. And one of the things that I've learned over the years is that even if somebody has been training for a long time, I would assume that they would be very comfortable seeking out a new school and reaching out. But that's not always the case. We have a lot yeah. of people who, you know, they'll write to me, you know, I, I trained for 10 years and they dip their toe back in by listening to this show and kind of immersing themselves and feeling like they're around, at least, you know, in this case, two other martial artists talking about martial arts. Sure. And sometimes it'll give them the confidence. Can you talk about what it was like going from, hey, I've gotten to know a couple of these students and I like these people and they seem like good people to taking that leap and talking to the instructor and having that conversation that to people who, even if they've had it before, can seem so intimidating? Yeah. I mean, you know, martial arts is is one of the key concepts we teach is like humility. Mm-hmm. And so I would encourage anyone to just approach um, from a position of humility. So I went to this gentleman, uh, Master Barley, and I said to him, I said, listen, I'm, 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 I'm not really doing much. I, I love martial arts. I want to train. Um, yeah, I've seen your students. I said, I, I don't care. I will go back to, I was, a, uh, I had, I had tested for my, my third Don at the time, but, um, the, the organization that I had been with before was kind of, kind of flaky. And I was like, listen, I don't care. I said, I'll go back to, to white belt. You know, I, I don't care. You know, I'll, I'll do whatever you, you want. That? Was that, was that a genuine? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely, I was like, I don't care. I was like, I just need to train. Mm. Um, because, and my thought process was that I don't know if I knew it at the time, but my thought process now was if I go and I approach this humbly and say, listen, I will learn how you do things differently. I will learn, absorb as much as I can um, and put myself in this, this lower position. They will eventually see, you know, what I, what I can bring to the table, you know, but if I come in boisterous and like, oh, you know, I know how to do this and I'm a third degree black belt, then they're not going to give me the time of day. And, um, so if someone is in between schools, it's like, I want to get back into it. Um, chances are, in my opinion, if you're looking to get back into it, you, you, you probably know, you know, you, you probably, uh, are dedicated. Yeah. You know, because you're, you're not just letting this slide off your back. You're saying, I want to get back into it. And so you're probably pretty dedicated. So if you go in from that position of, of being humble and saying, you know, I just want to learn because that's the point of martial arts is just to learn and grow and self-improve. If I go in from this position of, hey, I want to learn, then eventually people will respect that and you will, you know, be, yeah. be I don't want to say elevated because that sounds so cocky, but like you'll, you'll get your place back. You know, you'll end you'll up where you should back. be. 
Exactly. Exactly. And that's exactly what happened with me, you know, is I, I went to the school and, um, I went to the school. And so, like I said, I was, I was technically a third Don at the time, but you know, there was different people. It was a Tong pseudo school, which is what I always trained in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the foundation was there, but every school does things differently. And so, um, he would, were the forms the part- same, uh, similar, but you know, there's differences here and there, you know, that's, there was that's one- even worse. I'd rather yeah, they be completely <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it, it was, it was, a. Uh, and, and like I said, I just was like, I want to absorb as much as possible because I'm, I'm very much the type of person who's like, there's not one right way to do things. I want to learn three, four, five different ways to do things. And then I can pick and choose and share. I get it. So he would part me, partner me up with like his, his red belt students to go over his lower belt material and, um, you know, forms that I knew, but maybe he did differently. And it didn't matter. I, I was, I remember he had me one time with like a 12 year old red belt. I was, I was, I just graduated college. I was like 21 at the time. He's with a 10 year old red belt showing me. And I, this kid's teaching me and I'm just like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To like this 12 year old red belt. And the kid's looking at me like, okay. Like, you know, like having this, this, this adult man, like, yes, sir. And listening to him. But that's, that's the position I approached it from of saying, you know what, I'm going to come in and I'm going to learn. And like I said, eventually, uh, I was, um, made one of his floor instructors. He recognized that, um, I was able to get caught up and learn. I think it made me even better than where I was in the first spot because now, um, not only did I know his curriculum, but I had kind of this background of other things I could bring to the table, different viewpoints. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it ended up being a great experience. But the other thing I would say too, for people that are looking for to dive back in is just like the instructors are going to be feeling you out and seeing where you are, you know, you also have to to fill out the instructors. I'll tell you the reason I went to Master Barley's school was not because he was really kind to me. It's because when I went to this tournament, his students were like super humble and super welcoming. And that's the thing that made me say like, okay, where is this coming from? Right. Um, There's a common st- denominator here. If it's Yeah, exactly. People. Was this instructor. And um because there were lots of other Tang Sudo schools in the area that I could have gone to, but it just, you know, for one reason or another, I wasn't a fan. Um, and then I found this instructor and I knew him by his, his students. Uh, and that's where I, I sought it out. So yeah, I would just really encourage anyone, if you're thinking of getting back into it, like take that leap, you know, introduce yourself people and, and come from a very humble position. And um, like you said, you'll, you'll get back to where you're, you're, you're needed. And even if that takes like a really long time, you're going to learn a lot on the way. And really that's, that's the reason you should be doing it in the first place. Um, so yeah, it ended up being a really great experience for me, but you're right. It can be really, uh, difficult for a lot of other people. You said something as you started telling that story. And I think, I think it draws an interesting line and I'm, I'm trying to place people on one side or the other. You said, I, I want to train. Mm-hmm. The other reason that I hear people going and looking around at other schools is I want to continue my rank. I want to get my next belt. Right. Right. And the irony is if your motivation is training, the other things will follow. If your motivation is rank, you're not necessarily going to learn. Yeah. And, and I think that, that I've, I've had people come to me, you know, friends, people I don't really know the school shut down. And the first thing, you know, well, What's important to you, the first thing they mention is, you know, I, I was I, I was about to test for my this or, you know, I, I you know, t- I, I've got enough time in to be a that. It's like, OK. Yeah. So what? OK, what, what 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 does that mean to you? Right. And, and not everybody approaches rank in a negative way. Right. Like like that. That's sure. a whole that's a whole other bucket that I don't think we need to go into. But I think when when the focus is on training, what I like to call a white belt mentality, walking in, you talked about it as humility, everything else seems to fall into place. Yeah. And I mean, rank is 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 great in terms of goal setting, right? Like I'm a strong believer in in goal setting. You should always have something you're reaching for. And if that goal is fourth dawn, fifth dawn, whatever, you know, um, that's a great goal. Um, and I would encourage you to pursue that. But like you said, you know, that, that comes with, with, with training. Um, you, I always think about it like this, you know, when you are, uh, in 
college, for example, you know, your, your goal with college is to graduate and get a job, right? Your goal with college is to graduate and get a job. But you're, you're not just going through college, you know, so that at the end of the day, you can get that diploma and it says, okay, yeah, you can go get a job, right? right? The goal of, hopefully the goal of college, and I know it's not like this for everyone, hopefully the goal is to go to your classes and learn and gain skills and maybe an internship and gain all these skills so that when you go to get a job, you can show how equipped you are. There are um, far cheaper ways to get a piece of paper that says yeah. <laughs> the same sort of thing than investing two, four, eight years and hundreds yep. of thousands of dollars. Yeah, but that's how some people look at it. Some people like I have I have friends who and and there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. They wanted to go to, you know, the Ivy League, Cornell, Harvard, right? Because that's going to get me the best job. And and those are great schools. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um but I do a lot of mentoring for my teenage students and I always tell them like, you know, go go to where you think you're going to get the best education, right? Go to where you're going to have the most opportunities to learn. Um, and those might be one and the same, the place you have the best opportunity to learn might be Harvard. Um, but the learning needs to come first because that's going to equip you. And it's the same thing with martial arts, right? Don't go to the place where, oh, well, they'll let me test for my next rank in six months. You know, don't go to the place where, oh, well, they're on the, the national championship sparring team. No, those things are great. Absolutely. And, and those might be the best places for you to learn, but not necessarily. And when you orient your mind to say, I want to learn, I want to grow, I want to improve my skills, um, those other things, whether it's a new rank or becoming a championship fighter or, you know, mastering another style, whatever, whatever, whatever your goal mm -hmm. is, those things will come through your learning. And I think along the way, you'll, you'll become much better equipped uh, for that final goal because you took those steps in the meantime. So yeah, it's, it's, it's super important. I, uh, I heard it said like, uh, one of, one of my instructors who I work with now, he uses this term called video game mentality mm. where people have this idea of, okay, I beat level one. Let's go to level two. I beat level two. Let's go to level three. Right. And really what it should be is, okay, I beat level one. Let me go back and see if I can do it faster or if I can do it better or if I can do it without, losing a life or whatever it is. Um, and that's how it is with, with martial arts. I think a lot of times is I want to get the first down. I want to get the second down. I want to get the third down. No, let's go back and perfect your first form, your second form. Let's throw, let's work on getting that wrist escape or working with the bow. Yeah. And that's going to make you the better martial artist in the long run. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. When you were talking about college, there, there was a thought that came to mind and I think it relates pretty well to martial arts and what we're talking about. When someone goes to a an Ivy League school, you know there are all these. I don't know if we can call them studies. This, this reporting that goes on suggesting that it's not so much the level of education that ultimately is the benefit; it's the network, it's the people you're sure. around. You still, in order to take advantage of that, wherever you go, you have to be around people that are good for you. Yep, maybe like minded. You're there for the same reasons. I could go to, but let's let's pretend I'm 18. And I get into Harvard and I go to Harvard and I'm a jerk. None of those people are going to help me later in life. Mm -hmm. it, I'm wasting that money. I could throw yeah. that, you know, what, 300, 400 grand over those four years at just about anything else and come out better. But what if there's a school that I'm not really a jerk? I just, you know, I look at things differently and I go somewhere else that has a different vibe and I fit in better. And maybe on paper, it's not as good of an education, but I come out with, a better understanding of myself and the people I was around, a better network. And to me, this is why we have different styles of martial arts taught in different ways by different people. Yeah. Because I tell the people all the clicks. time, like I'm not the best, I might not be the best school for you. You know, I, I can humbly admit that, um, you know, uh, there are different stuff. I, I, I believe in myself. I think we're a great martial arts sure. school, but um, yeah, I, I've had people that come to me, and, oh, this is what I'm looking for. And it, it's been few and far between, but I have had conversations where like, you know, I don't think we're the best, we're the best fit for you. And that's okay. Right. Um, and fortunately, I know enough people in the community that I can often recommend people someplace else they're happy with. And, I, and I'm, I'm more than happy to do that for my um, fellow martial artists who like, if, if I know they, they really excel at one thing, you know, to, hey, you'd be better fit over there. Go for it. Um, 
Because but, which is more important that they train yeah. indefinitely because they found a, a fit yeah. or they train for a couple months with you and then they say, you know what, martial arts isn't for me and they go off and they lose all the potential exactly. benefits. Yeah, you, know, they, you don't want anyone to have a bad experience because that'll just ruin it. Nobody um, wins in that case. Yeah, ex- exactly. You know, I, 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 tell, I tell my wife all the time we have this conversation where um, I want to create lifelong martial artists, right? I don't want this to be... Uh, uh, and, and the majority of our students are kids under the age of 15. I don't want this to be another after-school activity. For some people, that is what mm-hmm. it is, and that's okay. Um, but the goal is to make it something bigger than that. And so I want to be able to equip my students um, to do that the best they can. And so if I'm not the best person to equip you for whatever reason, you know, maybe you're looking for a different style of martial arts. Maybe you're looking for, um, someone who is, is, I don't don't know, maybe has more relaxed style or more disciplined style or whatever. Um, that's okay. Yeah, that's totally okay. I'd rather you go somewhere else and have a good experience, be able to see the joys of martial arts than stick with me. You pay me for a couple months, you know, I get a couple hundred dollars in my pocket Mm -hmm. and then you're left unhappy and there's this negative vibe between us. Um, Like you said, that doesn't help anyone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's let's go back to competition. You talked about competition. Competition's often a way that schools differentiate from each other. But you didn't talk so much about why you got into the competition. I got the sense that it was part of how you kept yourself going after departing your first school, but I'm going to guess you started before that happened. Yeah. Um, so competition has always been a a really important part of martial arts for me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I don't claim to be uh, competing at the national level or anything like that, but a good tournament where you're able to go and, uh, see other people and challenge yourself against them. That's super, super important. You know, good competition is supposed to elevate everyone. You know, if you're going to a competition and you're just beating everybody and not learning anything, that's not a good competition. And if you're going to a tournament and you're just going, oh man, I lost, this is awful. uh, And you're not learning anything. That's not good competition either. Um, Good competition is supposed to elevate everyone. And so for me, going to competition, um, you know, it was, it was all about, absorbing as much as I could. So I would go and I would, I would watch the people who did the weird weapons, Mm -hmm. you know, or go to traditional tournaments and go to open tournaments and just see what was out there. Even though I'm much more of a traditional martial artist, open competitions aren't really my thing, but that doesn't mean I, I don't love to go and learn and watch and see the crazy breaks and, you know, the XMA and all that stuff. You know, it's fun. It's fun. Um, so Competition was a way for me to to keep learning, especially during a time when I didn't really have a formal instructor. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a way for me to network and see what was out there and uh, challenge myself. Um, because when I saw something, I would I would go and I would study it and I would learn and I would watch it and and I try to get better at it. And that was really important to me. I mean, I made some really great connections through competition. And you know, it's it's interesting that you focused in on that. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this today. The name of our martial arts school is Trinity Martial Arts. That's that's the name of mm, our school. I see, it, I see it on the patch. Yeah. And so um, the reason we chose the name Trinity, right? A Trinity is three things that go together. Mm-hmm. And so right on my front door, right over there, we have three words. We have sport, art, and self-defense. Mm. And so sport, that competition aspect is one thing that we do very heavily at our school. We actually just went to a tournament this past weekend. We got another one coming up in a few weeks. Um, it's something that's really, really important because it, it elevates you. Were you um, up in Colony? Uh, no, no, we weren't. We weren't that one. We weren't at that one. Yeah, that was a good one though. I watched clips from I, that. I, I saw some. I, I know some people who were there. Yeah. I saw some videos. Some great stuff happened. Yeah, great stuff. No, we were at a, we were at a, a traditional tournament out in Connecticut, and um, so anyway, like I said, sport right is one of those three things in the Trinity, and then there's also art, mm-hmm. right? Art is the beautiful movements and the breathing and the, the clean kicks and techniques and you know, the forms, that type of thing. And then the third thing is self-defense, you know, self-defense being obvious, you know, protecting ourselves, wrist locks, throws, um, yeah. different techniques, that type of thing. And so when we were coming up for the name for the school, I said to my wife, I said, these are the three things I want us to focus on sport, art, and self-defense because, there are some schools that specialize in just going to tournaments mm-hmm. and they miss out on this really rich 
history and beauty with the forms. And there's some people who just focus on self-defense, right? And say, I don't want to do anything that's not a hundred percent, you know, uh, an accurate move. And they miss out on all this, this breathing and philosophy that comes with it. So I said, I really wanted to focus on these three things, sport, art, and self-defense. And so going back to your original questions, tournaments were in competition, that sport aspect of it were the way that I was able to um, go and better myself. And it helped with my other two areas of art and self-defense, you know, because I was able to see people doing their forms. I was able to um, watch people doing their techniques and and talk about practical application. Um, and I think when you have those three things together, uh, that's what makes a really well-rounded and great martial artist. Um, so yeah, so I think competition is, is a great venue for uh, for a lot of people to do that. Nice. I, I like the way that you, you described Trinity because I, I think a lot of times when people present the aspects of their martial arts school, they present them as three very distinct pieces. And yeah. you didn't use this word, but I'm going to use this word. It sounds like the lines are blurry. Yeah, definitely. And they should be blurry. If your self-defense doesn't help you in competition or your art, maybe it's not the right thing to be doing, at least some of it, right? Like there should be blurry lines. You should be able to take things that you learn from competition and bring them back to your traditional training and vice versa. So I absolutely I just I just wanted to underscore that. I think that was an important point. Yeah. I always tell people, right? A trinity, you know, is is not three things. A trinity is three things that together make a whole. You know, so I always use the example with my students of um, I'm a big comic book person. Mm. So Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, they're sometimes considered the the trinity of DC because together these three superheroes create this this really strong story. They're great individually, oh. but when they come together and you have this crossover, it's like, oh man, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, and so when it comes to sport, art, and self-defense, uh, it, it's exactly what you were talking about. You know, if you... Uh, have this beautiful understanding of the movements and the breathing and the stances, right? That's going to help elevate your competition. And if you go to competitions and you're sparring and learning and, and fighting different people, then that's going to help you grow in your self-defense. Mm. And yeah, I, I think blurry is a great way of putting it because when those three things come together, um, it creates a whole martial artist, right? It's not three separate pillars. It's one building held up by these three things. Yeah, um, yeah so that's that's really... That's something that I found to be key. And the, and the best martial artists I've met, they, what was, what's the saying? You know, a jack of all trades, master of none. Mm. Um, I think that's absolutely true. You know, people say like, oh, I really want to specialize in, in just one thing. And that's, that's great. That's fine. But don't block yourself off from the other things that are out there um, because they really, they really help you, you become more well-rounded and grow into a better practitioner. And I think this is where, you know, this is a constant theme on, on not just this show, but other things that we do. What's your why? What's your reasoning? Yeah. Why do you want to do that? Well, I want, I want to train in, in this and that, you know, like a lot of times now it's, um, you know, because of the, the influence of MMA, I want to train in Muay Thai and BJJ and maybe boxing. Okay. Why? Well, because that's really good in the UFC. Or are you looking to compete in high level MMA? No. Okay. Yeah. What's important to you? And, and as you have that conversation, you find that maybe there are things about training even multiple arts that are going yep. to be distracting for them because they have a hard time remembering things and they feel that they need to drill techniques or, or it takes them longer to learn concepts. Well, maybe you should pick one thing and start with that. And yeah. maybe that one thing isn't any of those things. Maybe it's a curriculum that's a little more uh, broad yep. with things, right? Maybe it's a karate or a tung sudo school. And there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. if you don't ask the question, if you don't, if you don't know your why, I think it becomes really hard to know how to move forward because where are you going? Yeah. And, and you know, I would encourage if you're a school owner to, to make that one of the questions on like your intake form. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're gathering, get, gathering a student's name and address, like that's one of the questions you should be asking. Um, you know, even, even for what your younger kids, like we have preschool age students who... Uh, you know, their why is not to become an MMA fighter. You know, their, their why is they need to be socialized because they are feral children. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that's okay. That, that's that's yeah. good for me to know as the instructor. And then I have adults who, you know, they come and they, I'm just looking for some physical activity. 
And, and that's fine too. But when you, when you know the why as an instructor, you can better, um, you can better instruct your students because you know what they're looking for and you can highlight those areas that you know that they will thrive in. And if you're a student and you're, and you're looking for that why, you know, that will help you with your goal. Like we go back mm-hmm. to saying, um, if your goal is rank, and you know your why is oh i want to i want to increase my stamina and my flexibility then as you work on your stamina and flexibility the rank will come but it starts with that why for sure yeah definitely you talked about your leadership program uh which is something that a lot of schools don't have more schools are moving towards their understanding that a, a a formal kind of parallel education on the road to becoming a teacher is really valuable because to my mind, martial arts is the only thing where we assume because you can do, you can teach. Oh yeah. (laughs) I've been doing martial arts for 47 years and I'm of this rank. And I've seen some of the most competent high ranked martial artists absolutely flounder teaching fundamentals. In fact, I would go so far as to say that there is no correlation whatsoever because of what I've seen. I've seen some of the best be the absolute worst at teaching. Yeah. Is this something that you came to on your own, something that was uh, suggested to you? Where, where did this come from? Yeah. So, you know, it's, you're 100% right. Like I've, I've met some really amazing, amazing martial artists. You're thinking of who, one person right now, aren't yeah, you? Just, you know, just like I've I am. Really like, amazing martial oh. artists who just, you know, uh, you put them in, in front of a, a, a group of students and they just have this block of how do I explain this? I can do it. And I've actually, I've actually like straight out of people's mouths heard people say, well, just do it like this. And that's not enough, you know? So and especially when they're facing sideways and the whole class, you ever watch this, the whole class turns 90 degrees yeah. and they're trying to mimic and they're looking at each other and they're like, and like, and the, it's, it's just like, it's well, yeah, because you've been doing it for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's funny because um, I've I, like I said I've seen some martial artists who just have this block, and then I've also met some martial artists who have been training. You know, like they're not even a black belt; maybe they've been training three, four years, and they just have this gift for like sharing their knowledge. And um, you know, like I said, our our school is predominantly people under the age of fifteen. Uh, we have about a two to one ratio. We do have a lot of adults too, but it's mostly that's a better ratio than most. That's actually yeah. We, we do have a lot of adults, but um, it, it's it's the vast majority of our program is 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 younger. And um, I I've been very very blessed where teaching was something that always came pretty naturally to me. Like I was I was in kindergarten, and they would say, "Oh, what do you want to be when you grow up?" I wanted to be a teacher. And, you know, at the first school that I was training at, I was a red belt and I loved assisting with classes. Um, and I loved helping out and I loved being able to share um, what I knew, even if what I knew wasn't very much at the time. Um, so, so I loved that. I always really thrived at that. And then as I got older and um, became the, the head floor instructor or one of the head floor instructors at this last school that I trained at, um, I realized that what I knew was not natural, you know, for a lot of other people. And, and, and again, I, I'm saying this very humbly. I'm not saying I'm like the most amazing teacher, but like it came more naturally to me than it does to other people. It's okay um, to know that you're good at something. I, I, I see the yeah. line that you're kind of tiptoeing on, but yeah. you know, if, if you, if you have a degree in education and you spent time teaching, was it public school? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was. If it was, you can teach in public school, grade special ed. Yeah. You can. You can handle a martial arts class. I mean, that might as well be full contact out there these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, so I noticed it didn't come as natural to other people, and so when I, we first opened up our school, um, I picked some of my best students. I said, "Oh, come help teach class," and because uh, because our school was was exploding at the seams and I, I needed help because I was a one man show. And I said, okay, come help teach class. And I remember the first couple of weeks I had some of some of my best students uh, helping out with class. I, I was ready to like pull my eyes out. I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh. I was like, you know, Johnny's in the back doing cartwheels when he's supposed to be doing line drills. What are you, what are you doing? Like you're, 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 or Oh, we're doing basic form number one. Step out, low block. Okay, let's go to the next move. I'm like, no, go, don't go to the next move. They look horrible. Like, teach them. Um, and so I realized, like, they, they, they don't know what they're doing. Um, and so 
what I ended up doing was creating this leadership program where I took some of my my students that I thought had a knack for martial arts and a knack for teaching. Um, and I started really mentoring them with that. And we would sit down, I would, I would treat them to lunch and we'd, we'd sit down and we'd talk about um, what I call glows and grows, right? We'd mm-hmm. say like, okay, glows, these are the things that I saw you guys doing really awesome. You guys um, were really, really friendly with the students. You know, uh, yeah, I saw you guys, you were really making that line drill really, really fun and being positive, blah, blah, blah. All right, here's your grows. These are the things we need to work on. And so framing it that way and saying like, um, you get, these are the things you guys are good on, but these are the things you need to work on. And I'm going to help equip you to, to do that. Because I've been thrown into classes where like, oh, here, go teach this. That's, that's not a good thing to do. Your instructors and your leadership have to um, be equipped to teach. Mm. And so through this process of, of creating this leadership team that we've developed, um, we now have a group of students who... They're not, they're not all 18, so I wouldn't leave them alone. But like, I can step off the floor for a minute and have full confidence that they're, they're going to be doing a good job. And that's actually one of the things that when students come to our school um, to visit for the first time, uh, that they really, a lot of parents really recognize is, wow, you know, you've got me, this, this master instructor teaching, and that's great that you're on the floor all the time. But you have, I have young ladies teaching. I have teenage guys teaching. I have students teaching who you wouldn't look at and go, oh, wow, they're amazing. Like, we're we're a collection of oddballs here, you know, but we've equipped everybody to be the best that they can be. And people recognize that. And what's great about it is uh, a lot of students, they come in and their parents, you know, want them to have confidence. That's one of the reasons they sign up for martial arts. They want them to have confidence. And when they see you know, Johnny, who's 13 years old, leading a warm up, you know, with a bunch of seven to nine year old white belts, that takes confidence. Sure does. You know, that takes confidence. Um, and they go, wow, okay, I want my kid to be like that. And uh, from a very young age, we make leadership, uh, I don't want to say a goal, but we, we make it an option where, you know, if that's something you want to do one day, I'll t- tell students, you come help, come help out. Even if it's just holding pl- pads, you know, holding pads and I'll put one of the senior instructors with you and, and start teaching you how to teach, how to share, how to learn, how to grow. And that's how we create these role models. Um, you know, because that's it doesn't awesome. matter how good you are at martial arts if you, if you can't disseminate your knowledge um, to other people and do it in a way that is fun, kind, and engaging. Because that's the other thing too. I've met some really talented teachers, great martial artists, but their vibe, like they don't pass the vibe check, you know, like... Right. That that's a whole nother skill. Um, totally. Yeah. Totally. So that's 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 a, a really well rounded program. And people ask me to like what um what uh what program do you use for your leadership? We don't we don't really use any program, but that's because I have my background in education. I kind of know what works and what doesn't work. If you're a person who says, Yeah, this is an area I could really grow in, there's some really great programs out there that will help uh you create this structure and this mentorship uh for for leaders in your school. Um, like I said, I'm fortunate enough that uh, we're pretty good without it, but um, I would definitely encourage people like, there's tons of great resources out there. Don't be a, um, a person who doesn't think you're capable of learning. Absolutely seek those out. Nice. You, you hit on something and I just want to go back and make sure everybody heard it. You know, there are a variety of different educational models. And I'm sure as someone who is trained in education and implemented education, you know this far better than I do, but everyone I've become acquainted with at some point in the learning process, you are teaching. You are turning it back around. You're showing your competency in that way because it. I think we all probably remember the first time we taught and feeling like a deer in the headlights, frozen in place, trying to convey, how do I teach a punch? Right, yeah. It's a whole separate skill set. And so what I'm hearing from you is that that's something that, that's imp- that is important. And I would imagine that the folks who are investing their time in these programs are coming out, not just with uh, the benefit of learning how to teach, but their martial arts as practitioners is far and away better than it would be otherwise. Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely. Like, uh, if, if <laughs> you know, there's there's that saying that those who can't do teach, you know, you ever, you ever heard that? Like, but that, that's, it's totally like baloney, you know, like those who teach can do better. Um, mm-hmm. Because if you can explain something, uh, 
you know, maybe not even physically, because I, I have students who just have physical limitations, you know, where they're not going to have that vertical sidekick. Um, mm. But if you can explain the steps of chambering your foot, extending your leg, pivoting your on your toes, you know, if you can explain that, um, that's a level of mastery that is very hard to achieve. Yeah. Um, and, and so some of them, I just actually had two of my uh, senior leadership, two young ladies, they just tested for, for third degree black belt. And they were in a group of students and uh, they, all the students did a great job. They all received their third on. Um, but these two students who are continuously teaching, uh, they just, they just looked, they just looked unbelievable. You could tell. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I was talking to one of, um, one of the visiting masters who was proctoring our exam and they were saying, well, yeah, that makes sense. You're having them teach because they're the best. I was like, yes and no. Like, yeah, I initially chose them because they, they've got a lot of natural talent, but they're the best because they teach, you know? And I'm not saying you have to like, you know, jump into every single preschool level class and, you know, run your own studio though. No, but like, you should, you should have a good enough knowledge of your, of your hyungs, your katas, your forms to, to be able to explain them to a person. If someone asks you a question, uh, to be able to give them a reasonable answer. Um, and there's been times where I'm teaching, where I'm challenged and a kid asks me a question or maybe a kid has a, 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 a disability or something stopping him from doing something the right way. And I'm forced to go, okay, hold on. Give me a second. Let me think about how I want to explain this to you. Um, because this is something I've never encountered or you're posing a question to me that I never really thought of. Um, and those moments can be really uncomfortable at first, right? Mm -hmm. Like no one wants to be put on the spot. Uh, but at the end of the day, like once you're challenged once, now you have a new tool in your toolbox, right? Uh, if someone, if someone challenges you, uh, and says like, Ooh, I can't do it this way. How do I do it? Teach me. And you go, mm, I, I don't know. Give me a second. Once you do do that, you're going to be better equipped to handle situations in the future. You're going to have a better understanding of what it is that you do, and that's going to increase your personal training. Um, so yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend uh, helping out, assisting, you know, in, in some way if you can. And actually, that's one of the things that at our school, um, so in Tang Soo fourth fourth degree is considered traditionally master, mm -hmm. but Sabanim right is is not master it's master instructor that's what the title means you know so that that's part of it of getting to that level of oh i want to be a fourth down i want to be master instructing is is part of part of that journey absolutely yeah, yeah it was clear that you're passionate about teaching in a variety of ways and um you know we're recording this in video we're probably going to release an audio we, we may release the video you know we'll sure. talk yeah. about that later but uh if, if folks had the opportunity to see the video they would see that you have you 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 came to play with a microphone a, a little bit more, a little bit better than uh, what what most people show up to the show with. And sure. It's not to disparage them, but it's because you have a reason for that. You want, you want to talk about that? Yeah. So um, one of the things that I've noticed in in teaching, um, you know, so let me back up a little bit. I went to college for education. Um, you know, I spent spent three, four years in learning teaching techniques, did my student teaching, you know, taught 10 years in the public school system um, and, and learned a lot. Mm -hmm. But the things that I learned most about teaching did not come from my college classes. They did not come from the public school system either, even um, a lot of them. It came from my experience with martial arts and meeting students of all different ages and varieties and that type of thing. And one of the things that I realized was, hey, you know what? Um, I, I've learned so much as a teacher of martial arts. I bet that I can learn something about teaching from other non-traditional teachers, mm. right? So we started the How to Teach Anything podcast. Uh, it's a newer podcast. We've, we've, uh, we're, we're building it up. Cool. And uh, what we basically do is we interview uh, non-traditional teachers. So we've, we've had everything from yoga instructors to animal, animal trainers oh, nice. uh, to special ed um, consultants, you know, just anyone that, that teaches uh, in any way, shape or form. You know, it doesn't matter what it is you teach or who it is you work with, anyone who disseminates knowledge in any way we talk to them about what their best practices are. Um, and so through the How to Teach Anything podcast, we've had some really great interviews with different people. 
And I really encourage my friends because I have a lot of friends who are in public education. I encourage them to listen to it because a lot of times people think, well, you know, like reading, writing, math, you know, those, those, those are, though I know how to teach those, but you can learn so much from, from other people, um, in all walks of life. It's, it's, and it sounds cheesy, but it's a hundred percent true. Totally um, true. yeah, that like, you know, you, you can learn something from, from Joe Schmo down the street if you're just willing to listen and, and, and learn. And so the goal of this show is to, to find those best practices in all walks of instruction. Um, coaches, instructors, mentors, mm-hmm. anyone who teaches, we interview them. And then we kind of, kind of compile some best practices that can be used in traditional classrooms because uh, a lot of our listeners are teachers or in non-traditional avenues such as like dance instructors or martial arts instructors. Mm-hmm. Um, and it That's really creates great. these better teachers. Yeah. Where can people find that? That sounds like a show that a lot of people are going to want to check out. Yeah. So we have a website, how to teach anything podcast.com. You can find all our episodes there, but we're also available on uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all your You're usual everywhere. kind of pa- podcast uh, areas. We put the episodes on YouTube as well nice. um, at how to teach anything podcast. You can do a quick search and you'll find us. Awesome. Is it now? Is this your project? Yeah. This is my project. Um, it's, it's kind of the, the, a little pet project that I had simply because I wanted to become a better teacher, you know, and I enjoy talking about teaching, you know, martial arts is a hundred percent my passion. I love it. I've been doing it for 22 years. Um, but it's definitely the avenue that I get to do something else I love. And that's, that's instructing and that's teaching and, and being a role model and a mentor to so many students. So, so yeah, this is my little, little passion project. And we've had some really great interviews with some good stuff up there. That's great. That's great. It yeah, wouldn't surprise me if we have some folks listening who are going to check that out. Maybe even some folks that become future yeah, feel guests. Free. Feel free. Definitely. Great. Great. Yeah. So what else? What else? How, how about this? Um, how can people find you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, our website is trainingmartialartsny.com. Mm-hmm. Um, we serve the Hudson Valley area of New York. We're in Dutchess County, about two hours north of New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a, a, a great martial arts program, great school. We're very involved in the community and that type of thing. Um, you can definitely check us out on Facebook and Instagram um, at Trinity Martial Arts NY. Um, obviously, I know you know people who are listening you know, aren't in the area, but I would definitely encourage you to check us out. We post some really great resources. If you're looking to uh, get a feel for traditional Korean Tang Soo Do, uh, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, with a lot of our our forms on there, and we're always adding a uh, new curriculum uh, as we try to to broaden that and our understanding and create that resource. Um, and, and we just we just have a lot of fun. We we do we have a demonstration team. We're always, we're always posting cool stuff up there. So nice. if you're a martial artist and you're just looking to to follow some good martial artist content, uh, feel free to check us out. Give us a follow, and we'd love to connect. Definitely. Nice, nice. And I don't know if you can see it on your screen. You have this really cool lens flare going on. There's like a oh. mirror in that back. Can you see that? <laughs> yeah, I see it's it. It's like now. this rainbow. The, I, no, keep it. I think it's great. Changed. I love it. I love it over your right shoulder there. We have, so um, we have, I don't know if you can see, we have these big windows. Oh, in yeah. Our school. Oh, beautiful. So as, the, as the sun so comes natural through. natural light. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. As the sun comes through and changes position, we get, yeah, there it is. Uh, we get different <laughs> lights in here. It's a little light show. So, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. um, we, we've covered some great stuff today. I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for being yeah, no here. Worries. So let, let's fade out now. What are what what words do you want to leave the audience with? Yeah, I would I would just say um, after we talked about today, you know, is find your why, like we discussed. Um, a lot of people think martial arts is very one sided, right? They watch something like. Cobra Kai or they watch something mm-hmm. like MMA and they think like, well, I could never do that. Right. And there's a good chance you, you probably can't, you know, not every person who does martial arts is going to be an MMA fighter, but that's the point, you know, the, that's the point is there are so many other sides to, to martial arts. And so if you're lo- someone who's looking to dive into martial arts or get back into martial arts, you know, think about what it is that you want to learn that you want to get better at and find a school that works for you. And then I would also say to the people that have been doing martial arts for, for 20, 30, 40 years, you know, don't forget to find your why as well. You know, I'm, I've been doing martial arts, um, it'll be 22 years this fall, which I know for some people that that's still a baby, you know, and I've, I've constantly still trying to find new things that I want to learn. Um, I, like I said, I predominantly do Tang Soo Do, but 
Yeah, I, I've dabbled in other styles and other systems, gone to seminars, just trying to increase my learning. Um, and so if you're a martial artist who's been doing martial arts for a couple decades now, and you've kind of lost that, that why, and you're just kind of going through the motions, or maybe you have your own studio, but you're not really training yourself, I would really, really encourage you to pick an aspect of martial arts that you want to get better at, you know, um, preferably something maybe that you don't know already. And, and find an avenue to pursue it, whether it's uh, training on your own or branching out and finding a, a new instructor, attending seminars, even just following stuff on YouTube. You know, we live in a great age where so many resources are available to people. And so I would really encourage people to, to, to see the different aspects of martial arts and find one that works for them and then just train the hell out of it, you know, and become really, really good at it, master it, you know, and, uh, and enjoy it you know, enjoy it because there's so many different things out there that people um, can enjoy about martial arts. I would hate for them to, I love, I love the fact that like Cobra Kai is so popular, like, because I've gotten so many students who come to my school and like, I want to do martial arts because I watched Cobra Kai and that's great, but there's so much more to it than, than just that. So I don't want people to forget that. Great conversation. Had a great time. Matthew, really appreciate having met you. I hope we get to connect soon. That was a lot of fun. Listeners, what'd you think? Did you dig this one? I bet you did. Head on over to our Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio Behind the Scenes. Maybe leave a comment. Tell people what you thought about this episode. I love those conversations. I love hearing how the conversations we have and the experiences of the guests relate to what you've been through. So tell me, did you relate to this episode? I want to know, and I want to know why. You can also visit WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com and check out the show notes, the links, things we talked about today, photos of the guests, so you can get to know them a little bit better. All that good stuff is there. And remember, if you're down to support us and all of our work, you've got a number of options. You might consider buying one of our books on Amazon, telling others about the show, or supporting us at Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. If you want to bring me into your school, have a seminar, we can do that. Just reach out. We'll make it happen. Remember the code PODCAST15 to save 15% in the store, like maybe a training program, something like that. And if you have guest suggestions or topic suggestions, I want to hear them. Jeremy at Whistlekick.com. Our social media is at Whistlekick. And there we go. Closes another episode. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.